Was Call of Duty Black Ops 2 really that good? Please just hear me out, please! <laughs> Call of Duty Black Ops 2 was probably the first Call of Duty since Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare to take a major risk with its setting. Black Ops 2 is set in 2025 while also being set in the 1980s, constantly switching perspectives from Alex Mason and David Mason and is considered one of, if not the best Call of Duty campaign in the franchise. And I gotta say, um, yeah, I kind of agree. Hey, that's pretty good. Combine that with multiplayer that was fantastic with 15 prestiges, camos, grinds, DLC packs that included zombie maps, as well as a full on content plan for the entire year before Call of Duty Ghosts came out. And along with all the stuff we're going to talk about, the campaign that was really impressive that I forgot existed. Yeah, it's pretty easy to see why everyone loved Call of Duty Black Ops 2 back then. But is how is it good now? Does it does it kind of live up to the expectations that you would have set yourself with nostalgia or just going in as a new player? Let's find out. Safety's on, dipshit. So in Black Ops 2, you play as a guy called David Mason, who is Alex Mason's son in 2025. A new threat has appeared threatening world peace by the name Menendez. Menendez! And it turns out this Menendez character is actually connected to Alex Mason in the 1980s. And you get to experience a story that is connected through these two different time periods and both complement each other. No one move or this fucker gets it! So already this was a pretty big departure from the usual Call of Duty stuff. Call of Duty usually has a linear story, you know, you go chronologically, but here you're constantly shifting from the 80s to the 2025. And it provides this very unique Call of Duty campaign experience because they haven't done anything like this since Black Ops 2. And you know, it's been over a decade now and I'm really going back to it, playing it this time. I really wish they would because this is... You know, straight away, I'm just like, wow, this is just so different to the usual Call of Duty fluff. So on top of this really cool direction for the story, there's also the way they've designed the campaign. So not only can you go from the 80s to the 2025, which is pretty cool, but each mission you get to choose a class. Yes, you get to choose a class in a Call of Duty campaign. So you can go through, you can choose your perks, you can choose your grenades, you can choose your stuns, you can choose your pistol. And it adds a layer of, you know, individuality to every mission. So it feels like you will be playing it differently compared to someone else. Which also provides unlockables in the campaign, not just intel. Which, believe it or not, is really rare even today. And that's really good. It's really good. And on top of all that, you have the strike missions. Some people don't like the strike missions, but me personally, I really like the strike missions. I thought they were a breath of fresh air just to have this random encounter be playing as someone else that actually affects the world and affects the different endings you can get. Yep, we're going to talk about that. There are multiple endings in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Why? Why is there multiple endings? It's because you have choices to make. You affect the story. There's different choices you have to make in gameplay. It's not a typical, oh, just press A to choose this specific decision or B to choose this decision. Yes, that happens in the game like once, but the choices that you make in gameplay, whether it's, you know, shooting someone in the leg or driving through the wrong area at the wrong time, that will affect the kind of ending you get. And I thought that was brilliant. That's cool. They took a massive risk here. They took a massive risk and it was critically and financially successful, but then they, for some reason, Activision just said, nah, nah, let's throw all this away. I could keep talking about all the elements they've added. Just because you added something new and creative doesn't mean it's going to be good. However, it is good here. All of it's good. The campaign story is great. It has arguably the best villain Call of Duty's ever had by Raul Menendez. Menendez! Menendez is a brilliant villain. Arguably the reason the campaign even works, to be honest with you. Menendez! No! Thank you. 
If Raul Menendez sucked as a character, the campaign would not be very good. Just from a story perspective anyway. But Raul Menendez is brilliant. I love his character. I love his plan. I love his idea of trying to trick the West into eventually killing him to, to show that people that, that, that they need to rise up against them, that everyone's weak. It's just a good plan. Sure, it's a bit over the top. Sure, it's never going to happen in real life, I don't think. But, you know, the idea of taking over drones to destabilize and like, not just America, but the entire world was brilliant, and it's just, I really enjoyed it. And on top of that, you got all the twists, you get to return to Alex Mason, Woods, and they all answer all the questions about Black Ops 1. And at the end of the day, the writing is brilliant. I thought the writing was really good. I love this fucking campaign, it's brilliant. I think it's brilliant. Nothing, nothing really let me down. Compared to a game like Black Ops 3. Train go boom. You know, Black Ops 2 is a masterpiece, man. I love this game. But not only that, the gameplay is really great as well. Obviously, it's just Call of Duty. I can't, I'm not going to talk too much about it. I, you could go and watch my Black Ops review or my Modern Warfare review, whatever. And I'll be saying the same thing because Call of Duty doesn't really, you know, change much in terms of gameplay. Black Ops 2 made a great bunch of changes when it comes to choices, customization, all of that stuff. But when it comes to the core gameplay, it's the exact same. You point, you shoot, you throw a grenade, and you run away. Bang. Simple. Easy. Was Is, is it designed well here? Yeah, it's Call of Duty. They, they smashed it. They smash it every time, and I really, really enjoyed it. Your father and his people took Josefina from me. Gonna cry. Now, multiplayer. I couldn't play much of it because I, there was there's this um, thing called Plutonium, which is like a place where you can go play Black Ops 2, Black Ops 1, uh, Modern Warfare, multiplayer, and stuff like that on PC without the risk of, you know, getting hacked because you decided you wanted to play a single game of TDM. You know what I mean? So I play on that, but I didn't I didn't really enjoy it. I've, I wanted the classic experience, but it seemed like everyone, you know, had custom maps and you, field of view at 120, and, you know, that's obviously giving people an advantage. So I didn't play much of it, but it did remind me of everything that we had, the snipers, uh, the, the customization options, actually. That was brilliant, like the, all the attachments you could equip, the perks you could unlock, how the, the pick, me, pick 10, I think it was, the pick 10 or pick 8, or whatever it was, the pick 10 system worked. Brilliant. That was 10 out of 10 for me. I love that system. The, the sheer weapon variety, sure. Modern Warfare 2019 and Modern Warfare 2022, they, you know, they, they obviously they're going to blow the old games out of the water when it comes to customization, weapon selection, stuff like that. But I still think Black Ops 2 is a brilliant multiplayer game. I wish we could play it now. I wish they would remaster it, but, you know, it is what it is. We did not much, can't really say much after that. And I didn't play Zombies. What do you mean you didn't play Zombies? Maybe I'll live stream it one day. That'd be a good idea. Just live stream it and invite you guys. That would be brilliant. Wait, no, that's brilliant. Let me know if you want that. We should do that. We should live stream and then just drop into a Zombies game or something with viewers. That'd be brilliant. Okay. So yeah, Call of Duty Black Ops 2 was definitely that good back in 2012. And it's still really good in 2023. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe, and remember to keep it classic.